Friends, welcome to day five of the 30 day guitar challenge. If you're new here, I'm gonna give you a really short rundown of what's going on today and what's going on with this whole enchilada here. We're here for 30 days, right? For the month of April, we've heard this. And so let's do something to keep our minds sharp. Let's do something constructive to build ourselves up. Hence the 30 day challenge. If you wanna get in involved with some working out and some meditation and some playing guitar and getting close to your family and that sort of close to your family and that sort of close to your family here we go again with this close to your family here we go again with this close to your family here we go again with this close to your family here we go again with this close to your family here we go again with this close to your family here we go again with this close to your family here we go again with this close to your family here we go again with this close to your family here we go again with this close to your family here we go again with this close to your family here we go again with this close to your family here we go again with this close to your family here we go again and give me the thumbs up if we don't, if we're good. Because we can't, can't keep going on like that, right? That's no good. Doubling up. All right, we're good now. Okay, beautiful. Okay, thank you. We Gucci. We Gucci. Okay, beautiful. All right, so for uh, all throughout April, I'm going to be going live with you from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. from 11 to 12 we're gonna do a beginner lesson, and from 12 to one, we're gonna do an intermediate advanced lesson. So what we're doing for the beginner part is I'm walking you through the Unstoppable Guitar System Standard, which you guys get for free today. It's the second link below. You should have already, and if you haven't, that's okay, you can do it right now. Click the PDF link. That's the very first link below this video. That'll get you access to this, which is our curriculum for the next 30 days and some other bits in there too. Some other freebies where you can get some courses for free and some apps and stuff like that that are gonna help with your journey, okay? So please download that, that's gonna really help with this. And also it would really benefit you going through the first 30 lessons in the Unstoppable Guitar System, that's why they're available to you for free, the second link below, okay? Takes 21 to 30 days to build a habit. And we are in this situation, right? So. Let's take advantage of it and let's take these 20 to 30 days, uh, 21 to 30 days here, and let's learn something new and great, okay? Beautiful. All right, so today for the beginner section, we're going to be talking all about electric guitars. So this is walking right along inside the course. For the advanced section today, we're going to be talking about an overview of tone. So unfortunately, even though I do have my Kemper and it's running through a Boss Katana, sacrilege, I know, when you're not getting direct sound and stuff, we still can talk about guitars with single coils, guitars with humbuckers. I've got my 69 SG today, I got my 65 Strat, and I got my Dan Electro today for the P90 sounds. I got another guitar here sitting next to me, should we need it, but we probably won't. Those guitars will cover many sounds that we're looking for, and then we'll talk about tone and what have you as well, okay? I'm very excited to be with you guys here today, and you know, this is what we're doing, is we're just, as a community here, we're coming together and we're learning, we're having a great time, okay? So without further ado, without further ado, let's get into it, let's talk about electric guitars. All right, so, you've seen Angus Young play this, this guy, lots of classic, Guitar players have played this guitar since the beginning of time, since since the 60s, really, since 60, 1960. When this originally came out, it was called the Les Paul, and then they named it the SG shortly after that because they stopped production on the Les Paul because no one was buying them. True story. Now everybody loves them, right? So that's the SG. This is the Fender Stratocaster. This is probably the most classic guitar of all times. You've seen it. You love it. Lots of people have played it over the years. Uh, so what are the primary differences in electric guitars? Mainly, you're going to have the difference between humbucker pickups or single coil pickups or P90 pickups, which are also single coil pickups. This frightens me not being in my studio and having these expensive guitars laying around like this. It is what it is. All right, so this is a P90 pickup, so it's the, it's the width of a humbucker pickup, but it is still a, a single coil in essence, but it's stacked um, height-wise. 
Whereas opposed to a humbucker pickup, it's stacked sideways and then wound, okay? So that's what's happening, happening mechanically. You can think about a humbucker pickup as uh, two single coil pickups wrapped together, okay? And I'll demonstrate some of these different sounds here in just a moment. So an electric guitar is a regular guitar, acoustic guitar, if you will, except it doesn't have a sound hole usually, unless it's like a semi hollow body or a, or a hollow body. But essentially the sound is caught by a pickup, in this case, these guys right here. Sometimes they can be in the bridge, but most, most of the time they're underneath the strings and it captures that sound, turns it into voltage, it travels down your, your cord, right, your lead, into your amp. Steven, thank you so much for the donation today. I really, really appreciate that. And friends, speaking of all that, if you want to donate today, Michael, thank you for the donation. The bottom left-hand corner next to the smiley face, there's a little um, dollar symbol. You can click that if you want to donate today. At least, though, if you would like this video, if you've liked it already, don't like it again. It'll just negate the original like. So just uh, like the video one time, if you would, and share it with a friend on Instagram or wherever, wherever you share, okay? Um, thank you so much. So essentially, you know, the pickup, what it does is it turns that, that vibration into voltage, which travels out your lead, and then into your amp, and then your amplifier amplifies or makes bigger the sound. Uh, amplifiers sometimes have built-in effects and that sort of thing, or you can run them through pedals and then into your amp or some sort of multiprocessor and then into your amp, and we'll talk about coming up with tone and that sort of thing, okay? But essentially, you can play an electric like an acoustic or an acoustic like an electric. They're tuned the same way. Everything's pretty much the same on them, except maybe the way that they play a bit. Typically, acoustic guitars will have thicker strings. Electric guitars have thinner strings as a rule, but there's nothing to say you can't have thicker strings on your electric and thinner strings on your acoustic. You could do that. So as a rule, also, the action, which is the height of the strings coming off of the fretboard. So if the, if the strings were out here, that would be high action, and the closer they are to the fretboard, the lower the action. People say oftentimes, what's the best action on the guitar? And they assume that it's the lowest action, and that's not true. The best action is what's best for you. You hear me say this statement a lot. It's not a cop-out, it's just true. There's not one guitar that's the best guitar. That's why the best guitar players in the world, many of them play different guitars just like the best artists in the world might use different brushes or different types of paints or different media, that sort of thing. It's what they like, okay? So there is no right, it's art, and art is completely subjective. So it just depends on what you want. If you need gear recommendations, I have a link for that below. That'll take you to my store that'll show you all my, my gear recommendations as far as acoustics and electrics, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Okay. Um, so electric guitars also have knobs and switches. So there's usually almost always a volume. There's always a volume on an electric guitar and a tone knob. And in this case here, the tone knob lifts up and I can get some different sounds out of the pickups. This is the pickup selector and it allows us to pick the different pickups to, to come up with different sounds. Again, you can think of them like different brushes for an artist. An artist might like a thin brush for a particular application and then like a thick brush for another application. Just depends on what it is that you're going for. There is no right. There's what's right for you or what's right for the song or what's right for the passage of music that you're playing or whatever. So these are meant to be paint brushes, if you will. Don't be afraid to experiment with them. You're not gonna break anything. In fact, the more you experiment with them, the more you're gonna have an understanding for what they actually do. People will say, well, tell me what they do. Well, I could tell you what they do. I could also tell you the way chocolate tastes or the way love feels, but until you taste chocolate and until you feel love, you're really not gonna know what that's like, right? Me telling you about it all day long is really, it's gonna get you in the basic ballpark, but it's not the same until you actually experience that, okay? So same thing with your instrument. Feel free to flip switches and turn knobs and listen. There is no right. Mess with your amplifier, mess with your pedals. Get in there and experiment. Don't be fearing this. The more you fear that, then the, the less you're gonna know about it. Get in there and tweak every single knob 
on your amp, do it at least once so you know what they do. Same thing with your guitars, okay? Also, electric guitars sometimes have a stop tailpiece or they'll have a tremolo system, vibrato system. In this case here, uh, even though I don't have the bar in there, this is not a stop tailpiece. I can actually change the pitch of this. what the vibrato system does is it allows me to bring the pitch up or down and I'll show you some uses for this a little bit later on okay um, electric guitars are typically a little bit less susceptible to temperature changes and humidity changes like an acoustic guitar you know you're talking about a box a thin box where the wood is very thin and so the air can get into it and it's going to be more susceptible to weather. Electrics can typically take a little bit more of a licking, but don't take advantage of that, okay? All right, let's talk about some sounds uh, as far as, and in fact, um, yeah, we'll talk about some different tones and what have you and then we'll get into some questions. Actually, I'm going to save that for the second I'm going to save that for the second hour because that's what we're talking about is tone, okay? That's the basics of the electric guitar. We don't really need to go into any more detail other than other than that for right now because later on we're going to get we're going to talk about tone in the second hour. It's the more advanced section, but honestly, if if you're a beginner, this is going to be great information for you as well. I'd love to get into the questions right away. So let's do that, okay? If you haven't already, like the video. Don't like it twice, just like it one time and also share it with a friend. You should have downloaded the PDF, which is the first link below, and then the second link below is going to give you access to the Unstoppable Guitar System, okay? All right, here we go. Jeff saying hair is still looking good. Thank you, Jeff, for the moment it is. But soon, it's gonna be high enough to where it's going out of the frame. Mike hates that. He hates when my hair's too high. All right, let's get to those questions. Electric, acoustic, theory, it doesn't matter. I'm here with you for 30 days. If you're inside the program and you've got questions about that, let's dig into that because other folks would probably like to know too. There's a ton of people that have signed up for UGS Standard and they're in there and I'm guiding them every day. I mean, the, the amount of comments we're getting is, is pretty uncanny. So I know a lot of folks are getting in there. So chances are, if you have questions, there's somebody else who has a question about what it is that you're thinking too. So there's no dumb questions. There's only stupid questions, okay? Now, I'll skip over it if, if I don't think it's an apl applicable question, okay? Steven's saying, does it sound good and do what you want it to do? Then it's the best guitar for you. And that is true, yes. Don't overthink it. I say it all the time. You see a pretty, you know, a, a, a pretty person walking down the street. You're not like getting out the abacus and the calculator and the spreadsheet to figure out if you are attracted or not. You just are attracted. So guitars the same way. You're either going to like them or you're not. Hey, Eric, I know this question may be a little open. I realize that there are many makes of electric guitars, but on average, how much money would be good to spend on an electric guitar? That's a great question. You can get a really good guitar for like 600 bucks. You can. I've, I have lots of guitars that are even less than that, but you can spend 600 bucks on a great guitar. Uh, that's even getting it set up. You're gonna have to do a little digging, but a good Fender, a good Gibson, a good Epiphone, and then it properly set up will probably serve you well. And I have links for that down below. Just look for something that says gear. I don't know much about the Firefly guitar. I couldn't tell you much. Can I put the Strat in a position to humbuck? Paul, not unless the guitar has a humbucker in it. So this, this is a single coil, single coil, single coil. SSS. Fender makes a humbucker single, single. So it's an HSS Strat. And it's a very 
usable strat because it gives you all those rock tones. No one uses this, no one plays the strat in the first position anyhow. It's always in the second, third, fourth, or fifth, mainly the fourth position. Uh, no one plays it in this position. When I say no one, very rarely, because it's really brittle sounding. So a humbucker works perfect there, and then you got those nice single coils. So yeah, it's an HSS strat. But unless you have it in there already, it, you're not, you can't switch it to it. Does that make sense? Are there wireless connections to amps, wired versus wireless? Yes, there are. Wireless lets you run around, do whatever you need to do, and they're actually still great for the tone. Angus Young says that that's actually part of his tone. Because he uses one. I have an acoustic guitar. I'm planning on buying electric. What would be a ch what would be the best choice for the beginner? I've been playing for three years. Everybody, you know the answer. There is no best. There's only what's best for you. Kunal, in the link, in the in description of this video, I have a link for you. A lot of times I'm sending you to different places, folks, not because I want to lose you here on this video. It's because I want to give you the proper answer. And for me to flippantly say, oh, this is what it is, you're still going to ask, well, where do I go when I get that and everything else. I have the comments and the actual pieces of equipment for you with pictures, with descriptions, and places to buy it and everything else. We've painstakingly created that for you. So below, you'll see something that says gear. Click on that, Kunal, and you'll know exactly what my suggestions are. Those are my suggestions, okay? Do pickups need to be changed every few years? No, not at all, Stu. Uh, these went in, these were built in 1964, and they're still going strong. There is some amount of change that they go over over the years with the magnets, but, but no, they don't need to be changed. Strings do. How much will my acoustic skills translate to electric other than the obvious? Would I be starting over? No, you would not be starting over. It would be equivalent to driving a sedan or driving a sports car. If you drove a sedan your whole life and then you got in a sports car, are you going to be starting completely over? Or are you going to be like, oh, I need to get used to this transmission. The steering is a little bit more sensitive. Okay, I got the idea. That's going to be the difference between the acoustic and the electric. How high is the action at the nut on your guitars compared to the first fret? It depends on my guitars, but they're usually fairly low but nothing too obnoxious. Uh, if I gave you an actual millimeter amount, it's not going to mean really much to you because everybody plays the guitar differently. What you want to do is get together with a luthier, get together with a, someone who sets guitars up who can notice your playing, you play in front of them, and they'll, they'll get an idea as to how hard you hit the guitar. That's also dependent on how high those strings should be. If you're a very light player, then the strings can be lower. If you hit the strings hard, they should be higher because if not, you're going to be they're going to be flopping all over the neck, okay? Jackson S., thank you so much for the donation. Uh, 40 euro. Thank you. So kind, my friend. It's my birthday today. 15 uh, USD for the little, for little boy Eric. Uh, you and Melly and the guys have a birthday cake on my day. Thanks for all your lessons. Love them, Jackie from the Netherlands, Jackson's 10,000. We talk all the time, Jackson's 10,000. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jackie. Super kind. So sweet. Is sound improved when changed on an electric as an acoustic? It's totally different. It's a 100% different sound. It's just different. <laughs> Eric, how many rolls of toilet paper can I trade you for each live lesson? Scott... They're all for free. Keep your toilet paper, my friend. You're going to need it. Have you tried playing any Music Man's or the Sterling Indonesian-made models? I have tried Music Man's. Every Music Man I've ever played, I love. I think they're fantastic. Can your program be used alongside of Musician? You could use Musician. You could use other programs, read other books. Of course, it's not going to do... Not, you're not going to break anything. Happy birthday, Jackson, by the way. Eric, yesterday you said that the high humidity can destroy your guitar. Do you have a tip against humidity? How high can humidity be before I should worry? Thanks very much for your help. You're welcome, Andreas. So between 45 and 65 is, is more of a, a liberal 
uh, version, but around 55 is where you would like to keep your guitar. Now one day it could get more humid and another day it could get drier, that's okay, but it's more the consistency of that. You know, you're not gonna have a problem if you go a few days and it's one way or the other. But the way you're gonna battle that is you're gonna keep your instrument in an environment where the humidity is good, okay? So you can do that with humidifiers, dehumidifiers, if it's too moist out. I have both in my home here. And if it's too bad, then what I do is I put it in the case and put a, a humidity um, equalizer in there. So they have some that will actually equalize the humidity. If it gets too dry, it'll, it'll moisten the air. And if it gets too uh, moist in there, then it will dry the air. It, it's pretty magical. My Mexican Strat has two knobs and a volume knob. One of the knobs doesn't seem to change any sound. What am I doing wrong? M burner, you may not be doing anything wrong. The guitar may have, have been rewired, but you also may not be on the right pickups. So just make sure that you're trying that knob on every pickup. If it's still not doing anything, that's probably not wired in. Somebody messed something up, either originally when you bought it or they rewired it later on and got it wrong. It's probably not you. I have a semi-hollow body, E339 with split coil humbuckers. Would getting a solid body, Strat, Tele, LP, etc. be useful in expanding my tonal horizons? Indeed. Every guitar, every pickup is going to bring in some sort of change. Some may not be huge, but yes, indeed. In fact, there, uh, the 335 is a sound that I don't, do not have in, in my palette yet. Uh, I would like to have one. That's my next purchase is a nice classic 335. Although, if you talk to the guitar aficionados, they'll say that 335s, like all years, they're really good. They don't have like a, a year where they weren't good, and they don't necessarily have a year that they were particularly better. That's my understanding. I've asked lots of guitar aficionados about this, and that's what they've said. So, uh, as opposed to say like a Les Paul, like they say, we'll get a 58 or 59. I'm talking strats, they say, we'll get get a 64 and earlier, you know. In my case, I got a 65, but it has all the 64 parts before CVS started mucking things, mucking with things. Uh, that said, I would love to have a 67 Strat. No one's balking at a 67 Strat. They were good enough for Hendrix, so people get a little bit, they get a little bit too concerned about that sort of thing. All right, good. Are you going to go over scale modes in these sessions? Ultimus Maximus. Yes, we will at some point. Maybe not today, but we will get over we will talk about scales, etc. Yep. What product do you recommend to control humidity in the case? Uh Diderio makes their uh hu uh Humipax Humid or humid packs too, um, as someone mentioned here. Also, um, Faith Guitar, they actually have this particular thing that goes actually in the sound hole, but lots of people make those. Martin make those. Martin makes those. Lots of people do, but you wet them and then you put it in the sound hole of the guitar or you just put it in the case. I've got several of those. So if you just do a little search, I think I have those inside of my store, so check that out below, the, the gear store. I should have some of those in there. Uh, Jasco, I love the Dan Electro. It's a great guitar, and I did a review for it at some point. It's a beautiful guitar. It sounds great. It rocks out. That humbucker sounds great. It's got a coil tap. It's got a P90. I love the tremolo system. I love the feel of it. The action's great. Of course, the color is super cool. Uh, I, I love this one. For some reason, it, you know, like I said, it has a tone that's different than all my other guitars. So the tone isn't going to sound as good as you normally hear it, right? Because this is just open air right now, but...
grinding. Here's the humbucker. plays a little bit differently than my Les Paul. I get a little bit mucked up here. It's kind of a little bit hard to reach up here, but other than that, man, I love the way this guitar plays, man. tone to it. I love it. All right. Um, which style is better for single coil versus humbucker? So they're just different, okay? Different, different paint brushes. There's not one that's better. All right. Oh, thank you, Dwight. I appreciate you letting folks know about uh, 365 and UGS. Indeed. Do I have a video on pedal board setup? I do. On YouTube, search Your Guitar Sage Pedals, and I have videos for that. Obviously, inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System, I have whole courses for that. Usually, if there's a video for it on YouTube, there's a course for it in UGS. My electric guitar has a loud sixth string. This is good. I lowered the pickup on that side as much as I could, but it made little difference. Even thumb muting is still, still sounds uh, lowered pickup on that side. Same. Cause? Jeff. Hmm, that's interesting. So some pickups, you know, you have screws like this, and you can actually raise and lower those screws. Okay. Uh, my SG here has the same thing. So that's the kind of the cool thing about these is that you can actually raise and lower each one of these. So what I'll do is I'll have my my guitar tech, Greg Ellis, do this and he'll sit there. He must have, I mean, definitely has a better ear than me because I'll be, I'll play something. He'll go, mm, give that to me. And he'll, I'll give it to him. He'll, he'll take his screwdriver and he'll turn one of these screws like an eighth of a turn or a quarter of a turn, he'll, and then I'll play it again. He'll be like, oh my God, that's so much better. And I'm like, for real? You hear that? I don't. Uh, I obviously uh, am not um, attuned to the, that high fidelity like he is. Uh, so, boom, so you could do that. If you're talking about a Strat, right, these, these are fixed, and you might be able to see at this angle, maybe not, probably not, that some of them are higher than others, right? And so because of that, uh, they kind of have that set, kind of like set it and forget it type of thing. I don't think you can adjust those. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure you cannot. But on the ones that have screws, you can. So they, they, you know, Fender figured it out. But what you could do is you could get a thinner string. So for that sixth string, you could use a thinner string. If you're using a 46 or a 52, you could try a 42 or a 38 or something like that, you know? Uh, G3 Ultra is saying, hello from Tampa, just got here, what's UGS? UGS is the unstoppable guitar system. It is a mammoth course. Uh, you can get in it for free. It's the second link below. It's basically my answer to folks that want to learn how to play guitar. It's a step-by-step -step method, over a thousand lessons, uh, over 600 jam tracks, live broadcasts from me just for UGS members, uh, there's so much in it, I can't even tell you about it, but that second link below will tell you about it if you're interested. Um, the best best thing to do is if you're wanting to know what it is, get in UGS Standard. It's absolutely free for you guys today. Get in there, try it out, and then 
you'll, you'll find out. For me to talk about it is one thing. And again, it's like me talking about love or you can be in love. Which one would you rather, right? Get in the program. You're going to know what it's about as opposed to me talking about it. Okay. Uh, Kunal says, um, it's not much that of support, but I love your company and dedication. Thank you, Kunal. It's so kind of you. I, I really appreciate it. Just the thought is beautiful. So uh, thank you. All right. If you would, friends, please, all caps and a question mark when you leave a question. It'll help me grab your question quicker. So if you want your question answered, all caps and a question mark. If you're just talking amongst yourselves, then don't do that because then I'm going to get confused and I'm going to read your question and that's going to slow everything down, okay? And if, friends, if you haven't done it already, like this video. If you did already, don't do it again. Just like it one time and also share this, okay? That would be very helpful. We would like to let other folks know that there's other things going on in the world right now. We're trying to lift people up, get them involved in their music, you know, get involved with their families, uh, all sorts of people are doing things like this right now. I'm really seeing people rise up and be leaders, and, and, and it's beautiful. I love it. So, thank you. Okay, my salmon guitar makes my fingertips hurt. Too bad I can't afford to buy a new one with lower action. Besides, I don't deserve a new one yet. Well, number one, that's a good attitude, saying that you don't deserve one yet. Because a lot of people, they just assume that they need to have a very expensive guitar right away. Nothing could be further from the truth. Because you got to get your own skills down before you can deserve something, right? So, great attitude, CJ, number one. Number two, I've played Samick guitars. I've played some decent Samick guitars. Uh, they have them here in the States. And if the action is lowered, so you don't need to get a new guitar because you can go get a new guitar with bad action, have somebody adjust that action down. You probably could do it yourself. But if you do, make sure that you watch lots of YouTube videos to make sure that you get it right because... You can mess things up, not for good, but it just makes it a real pain in the, the buns to, to, to change it up, okay? Uh, Dominic, thank you so much, Dominic. Uh, I really appreciate your spirit. Dominic's always donating, and in fact, we had a little interchange, a little uh, dialogue on YouTube this morning because someone was saying, basically, hey, I tried to play guitar, and that's a crock of crap. You telling everybody that they can play guitar is just a ploy to get people to get into your program. My free program and my 1,300 free videos and my 60 hours of free live. That's me. I'm trying to trick you into getting all this free stuff. If you want to buy the program, then you can buy the program. But this guy was going off about how it was a big lie that, no one, that not everybody can learn how to play guitar. And and Dominic got in there and basically was like, dude, it's, it's about your attitude. If you don't have the attitude that you can do this, then of course you won't. And I say it all the time. Henry Ford says, if you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. Because if you have that mindset that you can't do something, no one's going to talk you into it, it, it being possible for you. Okay. So, uh, Dominic, thank you so much for the kind words. Thank you and your team for, the, for your work and time you invest in us, helping us to go through this time. Thank you so much, Dominic. So kind, friend. Is there much difference between Fender Texas Specials versus the Tex-Mex pickups? American, I couldn't tell you right off the top of my head how much difference there is. My guess would be, no, there's not that much difference. But again, I guarantee you there's somebody on YouTube comparing the two. When you're talking about comparisons like this, just like in science, you want the variables to be the same. So you would have to take the same guitar, playing through the same amp, with the same strings, playing the same riffs, same conditions, everything else, just switch the pickups out. And switching the pickups out is not an easy thing. It takes, it takes hours to do, you know? You gotta take them out, you gotta, un, you gotta take your strings off, you gotta do all this stuff. So it's a real tedious process to be comparing the two, but, I guarantee you someone on YouTube is do, has done this already because that's the power of YouTube. we got people doing that out there. It's cool. Max Wood, thank you for the donation, my friend. I really appreciate it. It helps keep the lights on right now, especially during this time where the studio's unmanned and um, unpersoned and we can't, uh, we can't go there, right? Because we're all on lockdown. So thank you, Max. Very kind. Does string gauge matter? Chuck, it does for certain things. It does for tone. It does for being able to bend the strings and what have you. If your strings are too thick, then it's going to be difficult to bend them. Also, 
the thinner the string, typically the more, the more clarity that you're going to get from them. That being said, Stevie Ray Vaughan played really thick strings and his tone was magnificent. So I think sometimes people overemphasize this idea of string gauge. 100% you will feel it, okay? So if, you put, if you're used to bending on nines and then you put tens on your guitar, that means the, the high E is a 10 as opposed to a nine, you will really feel a difference for sure. If you put 11s or 12s on them, you might not be able to bend the strings very well at all. So as far as bending, yes, it makes a big difference. And as far as uh, the sound, it does make a difference, but it's probably not gonna be as dramatic as you might think. So this is, uh, this is a, a D59 XT, if you guys were asking. I think they, they make another model, 64 XT. This is a 59 XT, if that's the one you're talking about. Eric, I just changed the string on my guitar. Now the fourth string st sounds dull. Could I have messed something up on the bridge? Yeah, you could have, but probably not. I'm not sure what you mean by dull. Do you mean like it's out of pitch, or it's too quiet, or it's dark sounding? Some of that can be adjusted with your pickups, okay, by using this, by, by twisting the screw underneath that string on the pickup. If you're able to do that, if you have a pickup that you can do that, you might want to adjust that and see if that fixes the sound for you. Okay, how was Stevie Ray Vaughan getting the incredible tone in Riviera Paradise? So, Stevie Ray Vaughan, just like any guitar player who's been playing a long time, knows what they want and they try many different amplifiers and many different leads and many different guitars and many different strings and what have you. So eventually they have a really good idea as to what they gravitate to. So this has to do with personal preference. It's totally subjective. So this again, you know, there isn't a best, there's what's best for you. If you, if you like Stevie Ray Vaughan sounding great, start there. But don't think that if you go buy his guitar and his amp and his cable and his pickup and his strings and, and set the guitar up with 12s and drop it down a half pitch and put fast fret on it that you're going to play anything like him. Because those variables have zero to do with how somebody plays. Practice. Practicing their riffs, the way that they phrase and that sort of thing has everything to do with it. Okay? What if I don't study theory and just work with my ear? You can do that for sure. You're limiting yourself because just like understanding, like if I was a scientist and I went out and I just observed everything and I'm like, man, I don't want to know any physics rules. I don't want to know any math. I don't care about any of that stuff. I'm just going to go on observing. You are going to be a, a scientist in your own way and you're probably going to discover stuff differently than somebody who is schooled because you're going to be, a, you're going to, start leaning on things that other people don't lean on as much because they have things like previous knowledge and books and that sort of thing. So if you're only using your intellect and that and and your and what it is that you're observing, you're going to be a certain scientist. Same thing with a musician. If you don't learn music theory, you're going to be a certain type of musician. It doesn't mean you're going to be bad. It just means that you're going to be limited in your knowledge as a rule, but not absolutely because there's somebody out there who just plays by ear who has a much better grasp of music theory in its organic sense than somebody else who's been studying it a long time. There is truth to that, okay? But don't think that that's like a badge of honor just because you're not doing a particular thing and it's going to make you a better musician. It's going to make you a different musician, okay? So uh, the more knowledge, the better. I don't know why you wouldn't want to have some knowledge. The very minimum that you should be doing is the theory knowledge that I have for you for free inside uh, unstoppable guitar system standard because that builds a foundation if you don't have any other theory after that you will have enough theory to be able to to know a lot of stuff going forward and from a very organic standpoint as well what would cause one string to go dead and not the others around it well if the if the fret if it's fretting out you know, if, it's, if there's a fret that's actually touching the string, that's one thing. Uh, there's many variables that could be doing this. Your neck could be bent, you know, it could be twisted. Uh, it could be hitting the pickup. It could be you. There's many different variables. So it would be, it'd be really hard to diagnose, especially over the internet, without actually playing it. It could be many things, okay? Body would 
types, good versus not so good, scarecapes. This is completely subjective. One person might like maple and another person like koa and then another person likes, um, you know, I mean, there's really so many different types of woods out there and people are experimenting with different kinds all the time. Sorry, something's in my eye. Uh, so it's not, it's not good versus not so good. It's what do you like versus what don't you like? Because one person's going to be different. Another person's going to like one thing. Another person's going to like something else. Do you think it's better to always use the amp when practicing or without the amp? Uh, it doesn't matter. I use it without a lot of times if I'm just practicing. You know, if I'm just kind of noodling, if I don't have an amp next to me or say I'm sitting watching TV with my wife, she doesn't want me to be plugged into an amp. So I just sit there with my electric. It's nice and quiet. Still not quiet enough for her, but you get the point, right? It's more, it's more, uh, it's, it's more quiet. How many guitars do you have now? Maybe 30 or 40, I'd say, within this studio, my downstairs studio and my studio across town. Yeah, probably that many. Oh, uh, let's see. Will you teach some slide in the future? Chuck, I teach a little bit of slide inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, but that's why I had my good buddy RJ Ronquilio teach a whole course on slide inside of UGS. We have some videos, and he has some videos as well on YouTube as well, so just search uh, Your Guitar Sage Slide, search RJ Ronquilio Slide, uh, again, inside of UGS, you can get inside that super program right now for a buck and test drive the whole thing for 30 days. So if you want to check out his program, you can do that. Uh, that, that's, that program is also for sale on Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y.com. So that is a style of guitar that is not my forte. I mean, I do a little bit of slide, but it's, it's all the stuff that I learned from RJ, to be quite honest with you. If you want to... You know, if you want to follow somebody who's really good at slide, RJ is amazing. Someone's saying, don't start the tone wood debate. I know, right? People get really, really um, obsessed with that. Yes, there are certain woods that make things sound a certain way. The thought, when people say that tone woods have zero to do with it, that just shows a lack of their understanding of really, 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 really basic physics, okay? Physics will tell you that, yes, the wood does matter. Everything matters on the guitar. But how much it matters is another story. And I think that that's where the people that say tone woods don't matter, I think that's what they're talking about is they don't hear much of a difference. Then again, I will admit if I can't hear something, unfortunately not everybody uh, is as forthright as that, and they might say that they don't hear a difference when actually their ears not is not tuned to it. They can't hear it because their 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 ears aren't good enough. Okay, I will tell you, I might not hear the difference between one one and another. I can tell you, I probably can hear the difference, but I'm not going to say, oh, that's maple. That's maple. Not only, oh yeah, I can smell it too. That's maple from 1969, Redwood Forest. I can hear it. I can smell it. You know, and some people act like that and I think that's probably not true. I'm open-minded to maybe that being some of that being true, but most of it's probably not true. I think it's there's a lot of bravado and a lot of ego involved there. My job is to slay all that ego and just say just pick up the guitar and play. Stop stop with the ego. Dear God, just play the guitar. What can you play at the end of the day? That's all I care about. Can you show a good position, a height of the electric guitar when beginning? So, you know, just naturally, as it's sitting on your knee, you know, or it could sit on your left knee, just wherever it's comfortable for you. One position is not going to work for another person. If you watch, um, oh God, what's his name? Tyler, uh, not Joe, uh, Joe Perry from Aerosmith, he wears his guitar really low, so does Slash. That's probably not the most comfortable for them, but it looks super cool, and now they've gotten used to it. So again, you may try that, and then it may not work so much for you, you know? I have to tune my high E streaming extremely tight. Could that be a nut or bridge problem? problem. Bridget, you should only be tuning the high E string till it tunes to an E. So. 
What you mean by extremely tight, I'm not sure. You're tuning it to an E, so that's as tight as it should be. So you'll have to let me know what you mean by that. Do you have to have your lessons on ebook? I'm not sure what you mean by that. I have ebooks that will help you get going with music. I have a free ebook, but better yet, get inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System standard. It's free for you. And I have PDFs for you as per whatever day you're on. So if it's on a day of learning how to read charts, then I've got something for you. If it's a day on here, the nine essential chords you should know, there's gonna be a PDF there as opposed to going through a book here you've got the videos and you have the specific PDFs that you should need, okay? I have a new guitar and would like, I uh, would, okay. I have a new guitar and would be good to set up it. The actions and the pickups. Should I watch a setup tutorial and try to do this myself? Please answer. Jimi Hendrix, <laughs> hi Jimmy. I would say, don't do it yourself. But if you can't afford a professional to do it, then your choices are limited, aren't they? Then I'd say watch a lot of videos and do it yourself. That would be my quick answer for you. Tips on keeping a Les Paul in tune. That's a great question, Paul. So first off, I have a video for you staying in tune. Search Your Guitar Sage Tuning. Your Guitar Sage Tuning. I have a longer video that will explain this more in detail because much of it has to do with people just not knowing how to keep their guitar in tune let alone a Les Paul, okay? Now, Les Pauls, yeah, they te seem to be a little bit squirrely sometimes with that B and G string, okay? They just do. Gibsons just do. But with that being said, there's a reason there's a ton of amazing guitar players who play Gibsons all day long and they don't have a problem with this. It's because they've learned to get around that, you know, that little quirky thing. It's like, a, it's like if you got in a car that had a clutch that was really super sensitive, Somebody lazy might just say, well, they just have bad clutches. No, they don't. They have sensitive clutches. And if you give it a second, you'll learn how to use a sensitive clutch. And then you'll be driving around this really cool car that has a sensitive clutch. You can think about Gibsons that way. They are a little bit uh, funky when it comes to the B and G string. But I don't have a problem with it. I don't think even think about it so much every, anymore until it happens. And then I'm like, dead gone at that G or B string or whatever. But really, honestly, once you learn, once you watch that video that I have there, on this, it'll, it'll make a lot of sense. Two, you gotta make sure, the number one thing is, you've gotta make sure that your guitar is set up correctly by a luthier, someone who knows what they're doing. Look, it's just like, do you work on your own car? If you do, good, that means you know something about cars, but if you don't, that probably means you don't know enough about cars that you take it to an expert. You should be doing the same thing with your guitars, is because there's a lot to know about it. There's a reason that there's tons of videos on how to do all this stuff, and people still muck it up. I've been playing for over 35 years. I don't mess with my guitars anymore because there's somebody who does this all day long. Of course they're gonna be better than me at it. Why would you, I mean, don't bring your guitar to me to get it set up. It's gonna sound like poo because I don't know what I'm doing like Greg Ellis does. But Greg Ellis doesn't teach or play like I do. So we know, we know our lanes, right? He still plays guitar. I can still work on guitar somewhat, but not like he does, okay? So take it to a luthier. Have them cut the nut, right? Each one of these strings should be cut just right, filed just right, so that they move smoothly between the nuts, so that when you are tuning, it doesn't give you that ping sound. If it has that ping sound, that means that uh, it's being pinched in the nut there, right? I know, no one likes to get pinched in the nut, especially your guitar, so um, get it set up right, okay? That's gonna make you very happy, okay? Takes a, takes a little bit of money to do it, but it's worth it. Do you like Ma's right? The Ventures. I love The Ventures. I do. You rang? Indeed, right? Do you have a structural lesson for different voicings of basic guitars? Bernard, basic chords, right? If you mean open chords, there's only so many open chords. There's nine, what I call nine essential open chords. Okay? If you're talking about the different voicings of them, yes, see my video on the cage system, but now you're talking bar chords, so those aren't so basic anymore, but they are basic in that they're triads, major minor triads. So on YouTube, search your guitar sage bar chord, or your guitar sage caged, C-A-G-E-D, I'll walk you through it. Friends, if you haven't already, like this video. If you have already, don't do it, because you'll negate that like. So go ahead and like this video and share it with a friend, if you would. 
Uh, I saw somebody saying something about a donation. In the bottom left-hand corner next to the smiley face, there's a, a dollar symbol. You can click on that if you would like to donate. What is for lunch or dinner? My wife has been making chocolate chip pancakes every single morning, and they are the most incredible chocolate chip pancakes in the history of ever, and I'm totally fine with that. That's what's for, but I don't know what's for lunch. Something my wife is gonna make, and it's beautiful. She is an amazing cook, I love it. All right, G uh, so we've been over that. Yes, 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 yes. And use nut sauce. Yeah, there's something called nut sauce, but you, and uh, it's called Big Ben's nut sauce, and it's a little bit of graphite and some sort of oil that you put right here, it allows the, the string to slip in between the nut and the other places of contact. Very important if you want your guitar to stay in tune. That said, make sure your guitar is set up first before doing that because all the nut sauce in the world is not going to fix your nut if it's pinching. Okay? You know what I'm talking about. Lee Eckhart, thank you for the donation, friend. Super kind. Yes, Jimmy, I did answer your question about setup can't walk away, bro. Jimmy, you know this. Oh, thank you. Uh, he's an icon for people saying they that can't. He proved you can. It's not even, this is not me just like speaking positive. It's just not even a variable that you can't play guitar. Of course you can play guitar. If you think you can't play guitar, it's just because you haven't found the right program, you haven't done it step by step, or you quit. It's one of those three things. You lost motivation, you know, maybe that's one of them. And that's the, that's the, the quit. Uh, it's one of those three things. If you learn things in order, and you take your time, you're always walking in steps, right? That's like a kindergartner saying, well, I can't I can't do a senior thesis. Well, not yet, you little twerp. You're in kindergarten. Go through kindergarten, and then in first grade, and go through the whole gauntlet like you and I have. And then when you get to your senior year, you can do your senior thesis. But not until then. you got to earn each step. Guitar is the same way. There's no shortcuts to playing guitar. But assuredly, anybody can play guitar. And Jackrabbit, if you tell me you can't because you're flipping fingers hurt, then I'm going to send you a link to a dude with no effing arms playing with his feet so you can feel ashamed that you would say such a god-awful thing. And if this dude is playing, he's got no arms, no arms, not a missing digit. He has no arms. They're not even nubs, zero. It's like this. He's playing guitar with his feet. There's at least two guys on YouTube that do this. There's, there's blind folks, there's people with hooks, there's people with missing fingers, messed up hands. I mean, I've got five deformed fingers. This hand was bitten by two dogs. One was a 150 pound Rottweiler, nearly took this finger off. Excuse, excuse, whine, whine, whine. But if you want to get to do something, you'll stop the excuses and then you'll finally get to the place that you want to get to. Okay. Uh, an example, uh, sorry, sorry, just an example, but that whole, it's kind of going off on a tangent here. I was at that whole Tony Robbins thing when he was talking to this woman about the whole YouTube movement. And he and I, I've watched the video over. I was sitting there with my daughter and it was two different perspectives because she's like, that's not fair. She, he's berating her and everything else. And I said, honey, she's, she's not berating her. He's saying, until you get over your excuses, you're not going to be able to move on, which was a factual statement. This woman was in her excuses. Well, if you placate somebody their whole life, then they will die with their excuses. Yay, they win. They get to bring their excuse to the grave, never having, having fulfilled their lives. Wow, what a win, right? And that's not his job. That's not Tony's job is to sit there and placate people. His job is to get them out of their, their situation and to, to lift them up, okay? And sometimes that requires tough love. And with me, with you, sometimes I'm going to say, no, that's BS. You need to practice more or you need to do this or that. And you may get mad with me. I've had people leave and that's fine, but I'm not going to change my message because my message is the truth. There's no shortcut to playing guitar. You do need to work. 
Uh, you have to do it step by step. You got to do it every day. And the more that you pour into it, the be the more you're going to get out of it. It's just it's basic common sense. That's all it is. Okay. Uh, Dwight saying I sent a I spent a lifetime of thinking I could never play guitar. I downloaded the 30 day free lessons and found out how wrong I was. UGS Pro and the 365 plan uh, is a major boast in my learning abilities. Uh, Dwight, thank you so much, my friend, for saying that. I truly appreciate it. Very kind of you. Aw, Blaze, Dutch, thank you for the donation. I was a naysayer, but I decided to knuckle down and practice for hours until my fingers feel like they have splinters. I'm seeing progress a little bit every day. Grit your teeth and the steps work if you try even a little. It's 100% true. Blaze, thank you from your mouth to the rest of the world. It's really important that other people hear it, not from me, because the, the, peop, the doubters are like, well, you're just selling something. And yes, some people just are trying to sell something, obviously, but I've got, so I've got to date now, I have close to 1,300 videos, 1,400 videos that are for free for you. You could go a whole lifetime learning from me for free. So it's not that. Otherwise, I wouldn't keep uploading free stuff to YouTube. You got plenty of free stuff there. So, but anyhow, Blaze, thank you for saying that. I really appreciate it. And look, we are not computers. In a million years, this thing may be still sitting here, this pick, but it won't be any greater because it's not doing things every day to become greater. Or as beings, living beings, plants, animals, we're animals, human animals, we can get better at anything that we do. We adapt, we evolve, we get better, we get stronger. Just like right now with all this, we're gonna get stronger because of this. Those that survive will get stronger. It's just inevitable. That's the way it's worked since the beginning of time. I didn't invent this, don't get mad at me. This is just normal stuff, okay? And if you apply yourself, it is physically, it is physically impossible for you to not get better. Your brain will not allow it. If you're pushing it, if you go out and you do one push-up today, but you didn't do one yesterday, you will be up one push-up today. If you do two tomorrow, you can grow and grow and grow, okay? Doesn't matter what you're trying to do, if you start something, very simple. Uh, there's a lot of folks that have quotes and what have you, like basically if you're, if you're true to the small things, the big things will visit you. The, the big things, uh, you know, what you do, when you honor the small things, the big things will be presented to you, but not before then. Okay, the universe is watching, and if you're not honorable with the small things, you're not going to get the medium things, you're not going to get the big things. It's just the way it works. So embrace the suck, believe me, apply it, and succeed. Yes, I'll practice and practice. I'll miss a few days, but when I go back, I am magically better. Is there neuroplasticity at work? So there's always neuroplasticity at work when you're learning, indeed. Uh, and if you miss a few days, sometimes what happens is, I call it the little elves. When you practice and then you go to sleep at night, if, even if you're having frustrations with something and you're, and you're like, ah, gosh, forget it, and you go to sleep that night. The next day when you come back to it, your brain moves things around, puts everything in the right place, what have you, you rest your brain, synapses are connected better and what have you. And the next day you're gonna be fresh and you're gonna be able to play that better than you were even when you were practicing it the night before getting frustrated. I call that the little elves, but yeah, magically it happens, you get better. But if you went too many days not practicing, you for sure are going to see a difference, yeah. I do have a semi-hollow semi body guitar. I do have, I have at least one right now. Ah, you, Barry's saying, you just reminded me to do the push-up squat challenge. Yep, you should be doing it. I did 54 squats yesterday, and I did 44 push-ups yesterday as well, and I'm going to keep going. So by the end of this, I should be doing 70 push-ups in one go. Is that right? 60. 60 push-ups. 70 push-ups. I'll be doing 70 push-ups and 80 squats at the end of this. That's the goal. I tried to put something a little bit out of my range because I haven't done 50 push-ups in a while. I haven't done 40 push-ups at all. 
Uh, Lee is saying lie. What's a lie, Lee? Come on. I'll take you on, brother. Let's talk about it. Let's scrap it out right here in front of everybody. Tell me what was a lie. Would that be a 66 SG? This would be a 69 SG. Isn't this beautiful? This was supposedly owned by the kids from uh, The Runaways, Joan Jett and um, Lita Ford. This was their guitar, and I purchased this from a buddy down the street here who bought it from the engineer. I've seen, a, uh, I've seen a beautiful eight string mandolin type instrument on your wall in some videos. Do you use that? Actually, that is a Puerto Rican quattro. It's in my other studio there and I bought that in Puerto Rico. A quattro is typically a four string uh, guitar, or actually eight string, four um, corsets. So two strings per, but a Puerto Rican quattro, meaning four, actually has five. So that's what they call it. Weird, right? What guitar have you been playing the most lately? Uh, mainly my acoustic. Could you mention the records on the wall behind you? Yeah, these records are, my wife is a songwriter. She's, she's written for Tyler Farr and uh, David Nail. Tyler Farr, she wrote Guy Walks Into a Bar, David Nail, um, Red Light. She's written a couple songs for, for Garth Brooks, um, Cold Like That, um, Something About a Train. Uh, let's see, she's written for Reba McIntyre. I'm going to take that mountain, Carrie Underwood. She's written for a lot of folks, so she's a beautiful and kind and successful songwriter here in Nashville. What was the name of the red light you were talking about the other day? Oh, the red light therapy. It's called a Ruby Lux. It's one word, R-U-B-Y-L-U-X. It's like 20 something bucks on Amazon. You need to get a little case for it, but it's like literally incandescent light that you screw in. And red light therapy, read about it online. It's super healthy in many, many ways, okay? Cool, cool. I'm 56 years old, just started 10 months ago. I enjoy playing guitar. Any suggestions to improve my skill? Floor, yes. Second link below, get inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. That is my number one. Far, if, if I have any suggestion for you, this is the next suggestion. This up here is get inside UGS Standard. It's for free. Start there because once you're in there, you're going to have a foundation where you and I can talk. Otherwise, a lot of people, they don't know how to talk the talk because... They don't know the basics, so so let's start there, okay? You have so many nice guitars. I do. Um, I'm very, I'm very blessed to have that. Are all solid guitars heavy? No, not all solid guitars are heavy. This is a light guitar. This is very light. No, I don't really have many. I don't have any many heavy guitars. Okay. Is sound compromised by using a Fishman under saddle pickup on a Martin D26 acoustic? Frank is saying. No, it shouldn't. It's going to affect the sound some, but so little, it, it would probably be unrecognizable. You're not, you're not going to recognize there being the change in it. You're just not going to, okay? The CBS era strats were heavy. I don't know anything about that. Now, technically, uh, this is a 65 strat, so technically it's CBS, but uh, all 64 parts, and it's a light guitar, so. But that's probably because it was the 64 parts, I'm guessing. Oh, are we at the hour mark? Yeah, we sure are. We need to go into our advanced section here now, friends, okay? So, let's... Switch gears here. We're going to be talking all about tone. I'm going to be playing all three or four of these guitars here for you. We're going to be talking about tone today. So developing tone, how you can think about that, multi-effects processors, um, the whole nine yards, uh, pedals, amplifiers, speakers, everything, anything that you have questions for, okay? So we're going to get into it here in just a minute. Let's, re let's revamp here. If you haven't already, go ahead and like thumb the video up. If you have already, don't do it again. You'll take that like away. So one thumb up will be great. Thank you. And also share this with a friend if you would. If you want to donate today next to the smiley face, there's a little dollar symbol there. You can click on that if you want to donate. Okay, this is the 30-day guitar challenge where every single day during the month of April, April, I'm going live with you for two hours from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The first hour is going to be a beginner. The second hour is going to be intermediate to advanced. 
And the first hour, I'm walking you through one of the lessons inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System Standard, which I'm giving you today for free. It's the second link below. So two things you should do is down the link below is get inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. At least get into Standard, which is the, the beginner section, uh, the first 30-something lessons. I don't care if you've been playing for 40 years. There's stuff in there you're going to learn. I can promise you that. I get comments all the time from folks that have been playing for longer than I have even, and they say, why didn't I learn this? Why didn't someone teach me this? There's that, okay? So get in there and do that. All right, uh, we're on the fifth day. So today we're talking about the overview of tone. So the PDF is also going to include this uh, really cool little quick cheat sheet about what it is we're going to be talking about that day. So let's talk about tone. When we're talking about tone with electric guitars, we're talking about all things that involve the sound of your guitar. So not the theory, not the chords, etc. Although we could incorporate that. Really what we're talking about is the actual sound what your speakers, what your amp, what your pedals, what your strings, what your what the woods and the, and the pickups and everything else are bringing to the table to create tone, okay? So we're going to start really simply here, and we're going to start with, well, first off, I'm going to start with the strats because it's my fave. So I've mentioned this. This is this is kind of my baby here. This is a 1965 Strat. I had been eyeing one of these for a long time, and I finally got one. Love this guitar. All right, now, I'm unfortunately I'm going through my Boss Katana, and that is a little bit dark. I mean, not dark. It's a little bit overdriven. So there's that. So we have two basic tones, we've got a clean sound, right? And then we have more of an overdriven sound. So these are two real basic, basic sounds I'm talking about here, you know? We want to make it dirtier. And we wanted to dirty it up even more. We would use a humbucker pickup. So a humbucker pickup is basically two single coils stacked next to each other and then wound. And in this case here, we get some really overdriven sounds, you know? somewhat of a difference between the single coils and the humbucker sounds. So, well, let's do this. Here's a straight up humbucker. I'm using the lead pickup, so this is the one that's closest to the bridge, and I'll play something similar, right? <laughs> Got that. Now, if we changed guitars and didn't change the tone on the amp whatsoever, this is what single coils would sound like. Ole! Thank you.
Thank you so much. Ali, greetings from Switzerland. Your content is awesome. Been watching your lessons already the whole afternoon. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Ali, and thank you for the, for the kind donation, my friend. So you can hear a difference there, right? <laughs> Right? So each one of these guitars plugged into the same amp are going to have a slightly different tone. Don't you ladies go anywhere. All right, so now here is Humbucker. This one, the gain on this is probably going to be a little bit more. Jay, thank you so much for the donation. I'm 50 and played. Uh, since six years old, back off 26 year hiatus from guitar. Welcome back, friend. We've been waiting for you. Played ear before. Thanks for the inspiration and great lessons. Thank you. Okay. Bucker here now. If I go, if I move this over to the uh, P9, we got this sound. Humbucker, P90. Some of that sound you're going to have a hard time hearing through this little puny um, iPhone speaker, uh, microphone, what have you, but you get the idea, okay? So some people say, well, how do you get that gritty sound? Well, that's using overdrive. You can get that naturally from an amplifier by many different ways, by overdriving the sound, there being too much drive, too much distortion, or too much. <laughs> like there was a such thing. No, there is. We want to, we want to, we um, you know, that's what heavy metal, heavy metal players say. But yes, we want to use the right amount of overdrive for the song, right? Overdrive is where we're starting there. We can do that with, this, with a speaker that's being overdriven or an amp that's being overdriven or pedals many, many different ways to do this, but usually we're doing it with some sort of an effects processor, pedal, within the amp, modeling software, whatever. There's many ways to do it. So that's the sound you're hearing there. different types and amounts of overdrive they're going to create some different some different sounds there okay now something else that we do oftentimes when we're when we're adding effects is we add some sort of reverb and or delay to create a, a bigger sound here so for instance Hear that long decay. We have that long delay. We can also use, or a long reverb, we can also use a delay. Just one second here. Let me pull this up here. So this is a delay. So we can do some fun things with this. this nice echo sound so reverb is more that kind of sound whereas delay is an actual you can hear that happening right 
Then we have other things like phasers. We have flangers. I can't do that to that song. Sorry. Got to use some sort of humbucker pickup for that. But, um, that's a flanger. Kind of has that warbly type sound, right? So there's many different ways that we can change the tone of our guitar through effects. Uh, the first ones that you know people say all the time, what's the first pedal I should get, Eric? And I always say a, a um, some sort of repeat or some sort of looper pedal, and then some sort of overdrive pedal. Because if I was stuck on a desert island that had an amplifier and a guitar and uh, running power, of course, then and it had Amazon service that I could get pedals and stuff like that too. And if I could only order one, then it would be. A looper pedal because with a looper pedal even if I didn't have the overdrive I could play and play to my heart's content I could create chord progressions and then noodle over the top of them etc etc right uh, if you uh, the, the next pedal you would want to get after you do that is to get some sort of overdrive pedal uh, the tube screamer I love the tube screamer I love the OCD the full tone OCD those are two of my favorite overdrive pedals and in fact, I have created a pedal with Kertronics uh, that is, if you will, an ode to both of those. They're different in their electronics and, uh, and there's things that I don't like about those pedals that, that we changed. But nonetheless, that pedal will be released soon. Uh, okay, so, so be on the lookout for that. So there's many different ways. Uh, there are modulators. So modulators will affect pitch. So things like flangers and choruses, phasers, or phasers more of a filter. You have filters like wah pedals, envelope filters, um, low pass filters, high pass filters, and they all change the sound in some way. We have reverbs, delays, we've got you know, you can, you can have these in pedals, you can have them in rack systems, modelers, amp modelers, and people say all the time, what's the best? There isn't the best, there's only what's best for you. So you have to do a little research. You gotta get your feet wet, okay? Is my Ebo handy? It is, I've got it right here, Jason. Let's, let's do a little something with Ebo here. Dear Lord in heaven above, come on. Smacking these guitars around. Jesus, come on. All right, so.
that's the Ebo. This is a magic little fun, fun bit there. You can see Ebo, which means electronic bow. And basically what this does is it vibrates the string instead of you picking it. So you have to hold it a certain way over the string like this. typically only play one string at a time but it's a super cool it's a super cool tool for breaking out of a box and getting you to think differently about the guitar anytime I can get something like that I tell you all the time I have baritone guitars and ukuleles gutaleles Nashville strung guitars 12 string guitars cigar box guitars whatever it takes and then what that does is it, it, it gets you to think differently about playing, which is a great thing, kind of break, break you out. What you, the SG is a 69, and the Ebo works, uh, Eric, it works through magnets in some way. It vibrates the string. It doesn't actually touch the string, but it vibrates the string. Eric, what do you think about the all-in-one modelers like the Line 6 Helix or Old Pod? I was a Line 6 guy for years, and I still think what they do is great. I happened upon a Kemper a few years ago now. I finally bit the bullet. I had enough friends of mine in the industry here who said, God, you got to get one. They're amazing. And they were right. It is absolutely amazing. I love it. And that was coming from guys who also owned many, many, many tube amps like I did. And so if it was coming from these guys that I believed in their tone and, and the way that they, they play and what have you, I knew... It wasn't just like some gimmick. I knew it was the real deal. And man, it is remarkable. I'm so in love with it. Okay. I've got a Pod X3, but it's hard to learn to program. Richard, and that's why a lot of people like pedals, is because they can just reach down and turn them really quickly. So uh, this is why I like the Kemper. Because for me, if I want to adjust my delay, the knobs are right there. If I want to adjust my reverb, the knobs are there. My modulation, the knobs are there. Buttons, if I want to adjust my amp settings, they're all there. I mean, the Kemper has, like literally, I won't even count the, the amount of knobs on this thing, uh, but lots of knobs, like probably 15 knobs and probably 30 buttons. So it allows you to, without having to delve into many, many, menus, which sucks, which is the thing I don't like, and you and I, people don't like about those multi-effects processors. A lot of times on the camper, you can just adjust them right away, and it makes it super easy to do. Uh, another reason why I like the Kemper over the Line 6 for me. But it doesn't make it right, it just, it's what's best for me, okay? Would that work on an acoustic electric? Yes, it sure will. Uh, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, how, your trainings are great. How much time should a beginner give each week to practice and learn? How good do you want to be? Don't give it much time if you're totally okay with not being good. If you want to be amazing, though, then act like it and practice like it. Think about it like it's a girlfriend or boyfriend who you want to be with. Would you be asking how much time do you have to spend with them or would you be trying to spend as much time as possible with them? That's how you want to look at your instrument. You want to get intimate. You really want to play a lot if you want to get good. It's a Kemper. What model? Kemper only makes one model. They only make one, well, I should take that back. They just created a floorboard uh, version. This is the Kemper Profiler, so it's the, it's the lunchbox version of it, okay? It looks like a lunchbox. It's like, I don't know. Actually, they're, they're four. I was going to say they're like 2300 bucks. I think that's how much I bought mine for. But I think they're as low as like 1700 bucks now. They're a, they're a steal for what you get. Mine is powered. Oh, that's why mine was more expensive. Mine's powered. I could power, amplify, I could power speakers with it. It's got a built-in amp. Okay, good, good, good stuff. 
Friends, if you have not already, please like this video. Don't like it twice, just like it one time. And then also send, uh, share this with somebody if you would. Would so appreciate that. Did I give the Dan Electro and SG away a while ago? So I gave the SG away a long time ago. The S, uh, I'm sorry, the Dan Electro I gave away a long time ago. The SGs, yes, we have two winners for it, but literally all this stuff went down and it's like literally they're still sitting there at the studio right now. So they're definitely gonna go out 100% and for our winners, um, I apologize, they're definitely inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. I wish I could get the SGs to them, but we're on lockdown here in Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, Paul is saying the Ebo solo in Faith No More's Strip Search is really something. Paul, I freaking love that band, and I freaking love that song, and I'll have to listen to it again, because that's one of my... I love that song as well, and, uh, and I never thought about that as being the Ebo, right? When I listen to stuff, unless I'm listening analytically, I, uh, I don't, just don't even think about stuff like that. When I was in music school, I used to listen to stuff so analytically that it started becoming a problem for me and I kind of got upset. So I stopped listening like that. I purposely stopped listening like that and haven't really gone back. So if somebody asks me to analyze something, I can do it, but really, otherwise, I'm listening more just like, a, like an audience member, just having fun. Are there pedals for jazz, like George Benson's sound, or is that the type of guitar he uses? That's the type of guitar he uses. It's the type of uh, amp he uses. It's just the way that he plays. He, you know, when we're talking about jazz, we're talking about darker tones for the most part. So typically, the darker pickups, the bridge pickups, and also pulling back on that, that tone knob for a darker sound. They usually don't do a lot of bends. They usually don't do a lot of vibrato in jazz. Very, very rarely at all. I don't, know, I don't even know if I've ever heard of that. I'm sure it's been done, but usually jazz, that's what you don't do. You just stick to the notes. No, no bending, no vibrato. And so that's also going to add to that sound. It's also a, just a darker tone, so sometimes they use thicker picks. So this is a pretty thick pick, right? As opposed to, say, this guy here, which is still a thicker pick, but... You can see the difference between um, between the two. This guy, this guy's thicker for sure. Okay, so those thicker picks will actually create a darker sound as well. Uh, well, uh, someone asked, would I plug in the acoustic? Uh, so the acoustic's just going to be louder. That's all it is. It's not really going to do anything specific. Uh, as far as running through this setup, it's going to sound real similar to these guitars, except it will probably howl a little bit more, howl with feedback, because it's not a solid body guitar. And when they're hollow like that, the sound comes from the speaker and goes inside there and starts swirling around and creating a feedback loop. That's why you don't see a lot of folks doing that on acoustic guitars. And it just doesn't look cool on an acoustic. Please talk about doing harmonics on the guitar. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about harmonics. So harmonics are places on the string that produce a chiming sound, like this. <laughs> I'm touching the string, but I'm not touching the frets as I'm going up here. Make sense? And so because of that, there are places on the string that chime. And some people think that there's only harmonics at 3, 5, and 12, but you can hear they're all over the place. It happens that, 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 I'm sorry, 5, 7, and 12, that 5, 7, and 12 are the places where the harmonics ring out the most. But they ring out in other places as well, right? Uh, crazy Train, right? I 
Christ. Okay, so uh, these are harmonics. And when I did this, that's at the seventh fret. They sing out really well, whereas the two weren't here at two. Not as much. And then also I did a pinch harmonic. You know? I have videos on that, on pinch harmonics. Also, wherever you're fretting, you can always go three, I mean, sure, sorry, you can always go five, seven, and 12 up from wherever you're fretting. So it's not just the open notes. So if I'm playing at the second fret here, then I'm gonna, instead of going five, seven, and 12, I'm gonna add two, because I'm at the second fret here. So then it would be seven, nine, and 14. So here's seven. Right? Here's nine. Here's 14. That's how, that's a little harmonic trick that Eddie Van Halen would do where he would tap the fret, not in between the frets, but would tap the fret and he would get that sound. That's a cool little trick there. All right, all right, so someone's saying, um, but all Kempers have the same functionality. Think about the Kemper as you would your smartphone. So like they have all the knobs and stuff, but you can keep downloading new software, which makes it cooler. So you can download new effects and new amps and new speaker systems and new all. So it's basically like every single time there's an update, you're getting new amps, new pedals. It's bonkers, it's so much fun to have. So just like your iPhone, or your smartphone, it just keeps growing with you, right? My daughter is left-handed, but I was unable to get a left-handed guitar. Finally, I got a Fender without an F cut and reversed its strings. How will it sound as per original wires? It won't sound good at all. You should not do that. Flip it and go the other way again or have a professional do it because the nut is cut for being one way. And since you flipped it and changed the strings around, it's gonna be all mucked up. It's gonna be messed up because the strings won't fit in here correctly. So I would either take it to a professional or, or put the strings back on the other way again. It's not gonna work that way. It's not to say it won't work, but it's gonna work terribly. It's like taking a car and putting, putting square tires on it. It's gonna be all jacked up. Hi, earlier I mentioned looper pedals. Would it be best First guitar, can you give recommend makes and models? Hi, earlier I mentioned looper pedals would be best first guitar. Don't know what that means, Michael. Um, recommendations for makes and models of everything that I have is in the gear link below. It'll take too long for me to go over it, and I don't know exactly what you're looking for, Mikkel. You know, pedals and guitars and everything else. And at the end of the day, you're probably going to want to see other people's opinions, not just mine on it, and then eventually you may want to buy it. Hence, the link is going to help you out with that, okay? Right, good, good, good questions. Okay, how to make harmonics all over. We talked about that, right? Struggle with pinch harmonics, help. So Jeff, if you're struggling with pinch harmonics, then what you wanna do is you always wanna start with the lower string. You wanna start with lots of overdrive, and you also wanna play lower on that string. Remember, the only thing you're doing is you're allowing the string to barely touch your thumb after you pick it. It's not it's not rocket science. It's literally this. Watch what I'm doing here. Let's see if I can get this like this. What's this? That's all I'm doing. Instead of picking it, it's... All right, and then if I add some vibrato to it, Is, um, that's a that's a a pinch harmonic, and I have a video for that on YouTube. Check it out. 
Was there ever a Gibson made that sounds in tune? Yeah, I don't really have a problem with mine, but yes, at first I did. But you get, you gotta get used to them. They're a little bit finicky. But like I said, there's a reason why there are amazing guitar players that use Gibsons and they're fine with them. They stay in tune, you know? Why is a Telecaster sound so different than a Stratocaster? And is there a guitar that has both sounds? Doug is saying. So the Telecaster has a fixed tailpiece, which is going to be part of the sound, whereas, you know, a Strat has has the uh, the whammy bar, right? It's got the tremolo system or the vibrato system. So that's going to change the sound some. And then, of course, the pickups are going to change the sound a little bit as well. Between those two things, that's going to, that, those are the things that are going to change your sound there. I mean, you know, do, do you have a guitar that has, that does both sounds? I'm sure there are. I don't know of one off the top of my head that would do both of them successfully. It just has a different, it just has a different sound and, and it has to do with that bridge. Was being classically trained a major and minor advantage in developing as a guitar player? I think any education is helpful. So, you know, classical training helped me to read back when I was reading. Any training helps whatsoever. So, but there's, you know, you got to remember this, whatever you're spending your time on, you're getting good at. And that means that you're not getting good at something else. Nothing to be concerned about, but just, this is why answering your why, the very last question, I think it is inside of UGS standard, the one I'm giving you guys for free. Once you answer that question, that'll help direct you to what it is you should be practicing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, otherwise, you could be practicing all day long, but still not getting closer to your goal. So for me, playing classical guitar was great. I just loved the sound of playing classical guitar. I loved the discipline, just everything about it. But while I was doing that, I wasn't getting good at other areas of guitar. I was getting good at this, you know, but yeah. So yeah, I definitely think it was very helpful. What is this 30 day challenge, uh, Saran? I'm glad you asked. It's basically, I'm here with you for 30 days, 30 days of live from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The first hour I teach a beginner lesson, the second hour I teach an advanced lesson, uh, and I'm going through the 30 lessons, the 30-ish, there's more than 30, the 30-ish lessons right here, the first column, uh, beginner there. I'm going over those with you. Those are the ones inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System, the course that I'm giving you guys today for free. It's the second link below. But, Sirian, before, before you do that, download the PDF, which is the very first link, then get into the course for free. And basically, they say it takes 21 to 30 days to develop a habit. We're here for 30 days, right? Are you going anywhere? I ain't. I'm staying here. So let's do it together. Let's, let's get better at guitar, and I'll answer your questions in the meantime, all right? Do you have any tips on how to get used to Floyd Rose Bridge, like Ben's, Ellen's saying? Okay, so it just so happens, Ellen, that I have a guitar with a Floyd Rose type of tremolo system, because Floyd Rose is a specific licensed tremolo system. This is licensed, maybe it's not, this is a graph tech, but it's essentially the same thing. <laughs> And I can go up with it. Now the problem with these with these is that oftentimes when you're bending, this one's not so bad. But when you bend up one note, so if I bent this other note up, it's gonna make this one flat. I'm just pulling on this other string. So it flattens the other note, which is not really what we're wanting. So if you're going to do that sort of like double stop bend like that, you need to bend the other note up that normally would be flat. You'd have to bend that up too, but that's a lot to keep up with. So most people just don't do those sorts of licks on this type of guitar, on the type of Floyd Rose, you know, guitar. Um, 
but there's lots of folks talking about Floyd Rose bridges out there. I've used them for years, uh, but more in the 80s and in the 90s, not so much these days. So there are guys that really know what they're doing with that. But at the end of the day, you know, they do what they do, which is float really well so you can pull back on them, you can dive bomb with them. You can do that with regular tremolo systems as well. It's just that that particular system is, keeps in tune really well. It's made for really, you know, going off. You can go off on that whammy bar and, and not hurt anything, not go out of tune, that sort of thing. Paul, thank you so much. Just used the 15% off coupon from Guitar Center and I'm stoked uh, to get a new Gretsch See, uh, being a hermit just got more fun. I love that, Paul. Thank you so much for the donation. Super kind, bud. Thank you. Yeah, being a hermit isn't bad, especially if you're a guitar player. It's, it's fun. It's super fun. All right, we're going to go another 20 minutes, friends. I'm here for you, so let's let's uh, get to these questions. Yeah, and this is a Variax, this guitar right here. It's a Line 6 Variax, and it allows me to... Uh, it's a regular guitar, so it's got the regular pickups in it. Uh, I can do single coil, I can do humbucker, but then it also has a mo has modeling capabilities. So similar to my Kemper amp that models amps, this will model guitars. Uh, I owned the first Variax like back in the day, a long time ago, early 2000s, and that thing was remarkable. This is kind of like the next, the next up from it. it. Does acoustic guitars, 12 string guitars, all the classics, what have you, and it does it remarkably, remarkably well. Can't get get through a measure of 12-bar blues unless you play the speed metal version. Okay, which type of pickups would sound best in a Martin HD35? So my favorite acoustic pickup, and I think I have this in the store uh, below. Just look for the gear link. It would be way close to the bottom. My favorite one is an LR Bags Anthem. That pickup is expensive, 299 bucks. That's how much I paid for it. But that thing sings. It's so beautiful. It has a microphone. has a piezo pickup. You can mix the two. Um, it has a phasing switch on it if you're out of phase. Uh, has a little volume. Uh, it has volume. has tone. Or not tone, but uh, basically like a mixer. between. So you can mix between both the pickups, piezo and microphone. And that thing sounds great. I have uh, $2,000 microphones that I will put in front of that guitar. But when I plug it in... I inevitably go with the direct sound as opposed to these expensive microphones sitting in front of it because it always sounds great. How about that? The pickup sounds better than microphones because it has a microphone in it, essentially. But that's the LR Bags Anthem. I think that's in my kit store, kit.com slash your guitar stage, or follow the, the, the gear link below. Okay. PRS Guitars, known for having the best sounds from the Strat and Gibson, isn't it? Gary, that was kind of the idea of the PRS, yes. It was kind of like, you know, let's get some Strat sounds and get some Gibson sounds out of it. The guitar that I'm having custom made from the ground up, I mean, everything's, everything is custom about it, uh, is also tipping its hat to a Strat and a Les Paul, those, those types of sounds. Okay, yeah. All right, good, good. Great questions today, my friends. Looking, 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 looking for, here we go, here we go. What's your thoughts on the Variax have, you have just used? I think it's great. To be honest with you, I don't use the modeling capabilities nearly as much as I thought that I would. Now, in the beginning, when I first pit, when I first bought one, I used them all the time because I was recording with one. I couldn't afford a lot of other guitars, and I literally would take that Variax, and I would take my, my, uh, HD 500, also a Line 6 product, kind of like, you know, today's Kemper. And I would go to a producer's house, I would plug in my Variax into that, and literally that was my whole rig. That's all I could afford, that's what I used, and played lots and lots of recordings with that setup, and did great. It, it was fantastic, and it was the same guitar every time. I'd do, um, I, I would use acoustics, 
but there were times when I would double track with those acoustics because I didn't have a 12 string or what have you. So I think they're amazing. Nowadays, I have the actual guitar, so I don't use them as much because I just like grabbing a Strat or a Tele or a SG or a, or a Les Paul or whatever, and I plug in and go. I don't, I, I don't even use this much anymore, to be quite honest with you. But it's still there because there are some guitars that I don't have. I don't have certain 12-string electrics and that sort of thing, and so it's, it's fantastic for that. You know, what should a guy like me focus on? I know two scales, no music theory, notes on the neck, but I have to count them, etc. cetera. Uh, chaos, start in the unstoppable guitar system, the second link below, because in that you're gonna have a why do, you, why do I wanna play guitar question, and when you, uh, when you answer that, it's gonna tell you what the next step is, and I've got thousands of videos for you uh, for free on YouTube, okay? And if you wanna get inside the unstoppable guitar system, we have a method for you to do that as well, okay? Okay. Eric, Corey is on straight after you. You guys are great. Thanks for everything. Oh, is Corey going straight on today? If, if Corey's in the chat, then Corey, please give us a link so that we can head over there afterwards. But I don't know if Corey's on today. I know he was on Thursday. I don't think he's on today. I think he's just on on Thursdays. I'm pretty sure. But Corey, if you're out there and if you are going to go live at 1 o'clock, then yeah, drop a link so that we can go over there and see your prowess. Because yeah, Corey is a, a beast on the guitar. I love that guy. And he's a good guy. He's an amazing teacher too. Have you used the eSonic tuning machine heads from Gibson and what do you think of them? If you're talking about the robot tuners, yes, I've had a guitar that have that had those. I also purchased a Les Paul Special the other day that had those originally. And, uh, and they're still sitting at the studio and we don't use them. I don't, I don't personally love them. I think they're a great idea, especially if you have to tune the guitar often and you don't want to sit there and fiddle with it. You do have to fine tune it afterwards, but there's a reason they didn't catch on. They're a little bit, they're a little bit wonky, but they are a great idea, you know? Robo tuners, yeah. Do you like Takamini? Um, yeah, yeah, they're okay. I've had Takamini guitars, they're, they're pretty good. Jim, thank you so much from Canada. Thank you for the donation, my friend. Super kind, keeping the lights on. Thanks, buddy. What is your view on fret wraps? So sometimes you will see people that put either a headband or a wristband or something right here on their guitar or some sort of fret wrap that basically mutes the guitar like this. Oh, it's not plugged in. That would help. So it mutes the strings like this. Now why is that helpful? Because if I hit the strings, it doesn't do much, but if I, if I, if I do that sort of thing, then what it does is I, uh, it, we don't hear the superfluous open noises if we were hammering and stuff like that. So if I did, you know. That sounds fine, but look, I'm having to mute all of my strings with my hands here. What a lot of these cats do when they put that thing on there is they're able to be very free all over the fretboard and not have the strings ringing out. For me, I'm having to mute all of these other strings and just play one string at a time. Okay, but if I didn't want that open string to sound, that's part of this lick. Open, but if I didn't want that to sound, it's, I'm gonna have a difficulty muting it and playing at the same time. So they put a wrap around it and that allows them to do some other fun calis guitar calisthenics that you may not be uh, used to hearing, you know? Does the scale length of an electric have an effect on the sound of the that the guitar produces? It does. A lot of people don't understand this, but yes, it most certainly does have some to do with the sound. Um, Obviously, there's people out there who will say it doesn't. There's also people out there who will say 10 million different things about the situation that's going on right now, and that doesn't make 10 million people with 10 million different uh, 
opinions right, right? So yeah, I tell you who to listen to. Listen to the guys who really know about this sort of thing. Listen to George Groon. Listen to guitar aficionados. Listen to guitar luthiers. Listen to advanced guitar players. Listen to, to Eric Johnson. They will tell you that the wood matters. They'll tell you that the scale length matters. They'll tell you all sorts of things matter because they know, because they can hear it. And the jackrabbits that don't hear it, they have just as loud of a voice. They'll sit there and tell, say all day long that that stuff doesn't matter, when in fact it does, okay? I'm not saying I can hear it. Sometimes I can hear it, sometimes I can't. But there are certain people who can hear it more than others. There's a story about Eric Johnson that he was playing and playing and playing. He was on stage. He was really frustrated because he was hearing something and he kept walking around to his amps and what have you. And he's like, what am I hearing? It was driving him nuts. He knew something wasn't right. And it turns out that he went to one of his cabinets and it had a loose screw in it and it was rattling a little bit. And he somehow heard this. Um, you know, it's crazy. Oh, thank you, Mike. Okay, Corey is on Thursday. Yeah. You don't want to miss him. He's a great player, a great teacher. How did Hendrix get that sound when playing the Star Spangled Banner? So he was running a Strat through a Marshall, and he was also using Delay. He was also using a, a Phaser, and he was using Feedback. So he had that guitar wide open. He had that Marshall wide open. He was using Feedback. So just like this, right? So we have this type of sound where it vibrates the strings and we have that, that kind of feedback loop happening. That's what he was doing, but he was doing it naturally with this, the, the resonant sound of the speaker. That speaker sound was hitting his strings. It's called, it's called sympathetic vibration. So when there's a, an earthquake and it shakes your house and you see your lamp shake, it's moving sympathetically, okay? The, the lamp isn't vibrating automatically, it's vibrating because the ground is vibrating, right? So if I bump my guitar, the strings are being sympathetically moved. I'm not touching the strings, they're being sympathetically moved. And so if we're playing through an amp and the vibration of the speaker is sending waves into the air, which it does, and then those waves are hitting your strings, if they're hitting them loud enough, they'll get the strings to start to vibrate, and then you have what's called a feedback loop. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I've heard of people uh, playing live and accidentally hitting the robo tuner and the guitar is suddenly an open G or something. Boy, that would really suck, yeah. Which telly did I get? I've got a 67. Paul saying, helpful for high gain situations? What is helpful for high gain situations, Paul? Let me know. Does Kemper allow you to double track to simulate 12 string guitar sounds. So, Michael, so a 12-string guitar has a particular sound to it because basically the top three or four strings, I think it's the top three strings, have unison, have unison strings, and the bottom three strings have a string that's also an octave up. So when you hit this string, you hear, you hear that, but you also hear... So it has that type of sound, like an octave. And when you hit the A string, it sounds like as opposed to it's an octave, okay? So that would be difficult to do with the Kemper because you would have to assign each string. So for like the bottom three, you'd say you have to go up an octave and for the top three strings have a unison, but you can kind of emulate it a little bit. You could just, you know, use an octaver right, to where it's playing two octaves at once, there's a way to do that. Do you get really loud harmonics from playing your Stratocaster unplugged? No. After strumming, keeping the chord shape in place without pressing the strings, my player series resonates for so long. Weird. Hmm. No. Uh, Stafford saying, hey Eric, last night I watched your video on how to find chords all over the neck and uh, major and minor. Wow, talk about mind-blowing, thank you. Yay, Stafford. Um, everybody check out that video, it's a, it's a great one, it's doing fantastic on YouTube right now. Other folks are also finding a lot of value out of that, so 
Thank you, Stafford. Yeah, it is really cool. It's one little hack that shows you how to find all the major, all the minor, and the diminished chord in every single key. Super easy. You'll never forget where all your major, minor, and diminished chords are again. Watch that video. It's like the number one video. If you just search um, weird, you tr search your guitar stage weird trick. I tell you what, my one of my staff will put it in the the link right now. One of the one of my uh, folks will do that. Okay, they'll put it in the ch chat there, and you'll be able to go to it right after this. We're only going to go another five minutes or so, so I want you to check that link out afterwards, friends. If you have any other links for folks to go to, like the ZZ Top video that's out that we just dropped. If you like ZZ Top, go check that one out. Uh, any videos that you find that would really help folks that I've done, you can drop those in the chat. We would love for folks to see those as well, okay? Is a travel guitar worth investing in for totally non-pro traveler who travels a lot, otherwise have to take uke for practice? Daniela, yeah, I love them. I tell you what, I don't have it here right now, but I, but that Gutulele, it's a Yamaha Gutulele. I think it's a GT-1. I have a review on this. If you search your guitar sage, Gutulele, G-U-I-T-E-L-E, -E, I believe it is, you'll see the one I'm talking about. I think it's in my store. The link for that would be in the gear link below. Check that out because that's 100 bucks and it's super easy to use, super fun. So I would suggest it, yeah, for sure. It's great. Great way to practice. What is the best way to play E diminished? Trying to play E diminished over piano chord has notes uh, B flat, E, and G, but the sound seems to clash. Uh, well, here, here's, a, here's a version of the E diminished. It goes like this. Put your second finger on the fifth string, your third finger on the fourth string, first finger on the third, and put your pinky on the second. It looks like that. That is E diminished. With people still having to work, any more exercises to do while at work, I carry my pick with me. Good, great. That's a great idea. Hey, Eric, I'm making some bread. Do you want a loaf? I would love a loaf. Thank you. I love, I love homemade bread. Mmm. Are most of your guitars some sort of vintage? I'd say half of them are probably vintage. Oh, it was 10 topics ago. Meant is the fret wrap mainly for high gain situations? Yeah, Paul, it's mainly for high gain situations, indeed. Although, I think, um, and I forget the guy's name. Oh, he played in the, in the 80s, 70s and 80s and 90s. Um, played on a Kramer, African-American fella. Amazing, two hands all over the place, jazz. Oh, why is his name escaping me? And he used that back in the day, and he used clean, clean tones, so he was doing it back, back in the day. In regards to tone, what is the tonal difference between coil tapping pots and coil splitting pots? Ken, I'll be honest with you, I don't know the difference. I don't know the difference between coil tapping and coil splitting. I believe it's the same thing, but I said I believe it's the same thing. I don't know for sure. I think they can be used interchangeably. You may have to do a little digging on that one, though. All right. Vernon Reed, Robert Cray. Nope. Nope, neither one of those guys. Robert Cray is an amazing player. Vernon Reed, ooh, I don't know about that. He's a crazy player is what he is. All right. All right, my friends, Stanley Jordan. Thank you, Eddie, that's it, Stanley Jordan. He's an amazing player. Go watch him right after this. Or actually, watch my ZZ Top video, then watch uh, Stanley Jordan. 
All right, friends, before we go, really quickly, if you have not already, please hit the thumbs up just one time. If you've done it already, don't hit it again because you'll take the like away. So just hit it one time. That would be so appreciative. And we're at 438, so maybe we can get it up to, to 500 before we end here. That's 60 people. Only if 60 people are listening right now. There's 440 of you in here, so hopefully, hopefully 60 of you will go over there and like it. So please do that. Also, while you're doing that, there's a share button. So you could hit the share button and actually share this with somebody. That would be very helpful because you're going to let other people know that, hey, there's other things going on in the world right now, not just this one thing that everybody's focused on and freaking out about. We know what to do. I've said it before. If a bear's chasing you, you can literally get away from the bear while not fearing the bear. Just do what it is you know what to do. You could also collapse in a heap of fear and let the bear eat you. Or you could run up a tree in fear and always fear bears the rest of your life and anything that looked like a bear and sounded like a bear and everything else. Or you could just do what it is that you know what to do. Don't fear, because fear isn't gonna help you, but do the things that you know what to do during this time. Get outside, get in the sun, spend time with your loved ones that you're, that you're quarantining with, get to practicing, get to working out, get to uh, get your mind going by meditating in that PDF that I'm giving you guys, the first link below. I have a whole bit on there about meditation that'll take you to a course that's free. Also, the Tony Robbins Breakthrough app that's just loaded with stuff that'll change your lives. Uh, do that, okay? So during these 30 days, I'm gonna be joining you live every single day from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. I wanna walk you through this. There's zero excuses that you can't play guitar. I'm giving you a free course. I'm giving you email support every day. I'm giving you two hours of my time live every single day so I can walk you through this. There's no reason why you can't do this. The only reason would be you don't really want to do it. And that's an okay thing, right? There's tons of people that don't want to learn guitar. That may be you. But if you're serious about playing guitar, get in the Unstoppable Guitar System free today. It's the second link below. Download the PDF. You're off to the races, okay? I'm going to be with you here again tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday, the 6th. And tomorrow, the 6th, we're going to be talking about the language of guitar. So we're going to talk about certain definitions that we need to know in order to speak this language intelligently together. Um, that's the language of a guitar. And then we're also going to be talking about inversions. What's an inversion? An inversion is when we take a chord and we have something other than the letter name of the chord in the bass. So it changes the sound. This is what somebody was talking about earlier. They were saying they wanted some voicings, some different voicings on basic chords. We could talk about that tomorrow in high detail. All right, you guys, my friends, stay up. Stay motivated, stay positive. Uh, being negative isn't going to help you, Eddie, but it will definitely, 100% scientifically proven, it will diminish your immune system, and you freaking need your immune system right now. So definitely keep up, keep positive, follow positive people, get rid of all the negative ninnies. They're not going to help you. It's not going to help you, okay? I love you guys. Thank you so much for these great messages today. For those that donated today, Thank you so much for those that liked the video. I really appreciate that. And for those that shared it, I thank you again. See you guys tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Go practice now and go watch that ZZ Top video. Okay? See ya.